Hello, I'm speaking to Dr. Mary Lou Arpaio, and we're talking about the Refrigerated Transport Technology course that was run by Wageningen University and Research two weeks ago. Mary Lou, can you tell me the background to this course and what made you want to sign up for it? I've been a, an instructor in their general post-harvest short course for the last three years. And uh, they always have one very short lecture on, on transport of produce. And the instructors that have given that talk are always very informative and very interesting. And I suggested last year at the end of the course, because I was interested in it, that maybe they could have a whole one day course where you got to walk into a container and actually really look at a container and understand how airflow works in a sea container. And I was told when I uh, arrived for the short course this year that, uh, that they had taken me up on the suggestion, that they had been thinking about it for a number of years, but it was my uh, writing to them and suggesting that, that they decided to have such a course. And did this course meet your expectations? I would say by and large it did. I wanted to spend more time in a container and really examine it with a... Uh, the instructors, but yes, it did. It, it reinforced a lot of things I already knew, and then I also learned many new things. And I think it would be a good to discuss some of the key take-home messages you got from doing this course. Well, it reinforced the concept that I know as a post-harvest biologist that temperature is so important, but we heard it from an engineer's perspective that it's as I always say, what are the three most important things? Temperature, temperature, temperature. But we heard it from a slightly different perspective. And most of the course was, was built around the idea of how do you maintain temperature? How do you get uniform airflow through a reefer container so that you can ensure that you keep the product in good, uh, good condition? Yeah, I know. As I attended too, I agree that that airflow was really interesting. Can you describe some of the fascinating concepts of the work they had done on airflow? Well, there are a couple different things. So um, in a, 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 a reefer container, the airflow comes down underneath the T-bar. So the, the floor is uh, these steel T-bars and the airflow comes off of the refrigeration unit down through a, a supply channel and then the airflow, the air is pushed down underneath the rails to the back of the container and it's cycled back over the top of the, the product. And what was very interesting was that we were shown data that airflow is not uniform. You would think it would be uniform, but it's not uniform even coming out of the um, refrigeration unit and that they have done work at the university to try to ensure that the airflow is better because the idea is that the warmest spot in the, in the reefer container is by the back door. And so it's imperative that you get that cold air to the back of the back door. And so they've looked at various things such as uh, covering portions of the floor in different ways to ensure that you move that cold air back down to the back of the door. But the other important thing was that we saw a lot of data showing that across the width of the container, the airflow is not necessarily uh, uniform. And an another thing that I thought was interesting was just the emphasis on the difference between fresh air exchange or ventilation and circulation. Can you emphasize that? Yeah, that's very important. So the circulation is the movement of the air within the container going over from the bottom along the T-bars up through the back of the door and then back across. Whereas fresh air is that there is a venting system on, on the container. And uh, one of the main things they emphasize is many times people will say, leave it half open, quarter open, three quarters open. But really the thing is, is, is to say, I want it X percent open and allow so much air into the container because each venting system is slightly different. But that is to bring in fresh air. It's important because uh, you have carbon dioxide buildup by the respiration of the product in the container. And so the fresh air allows for the venting of the respiration and also to bring uh, colder air potentially or warmer air into the refrigeration unit as needed. 
The other important thing is, is that, of course, you have to have the vent completely closed when you're using uh, a controlled atmosphere, con a reefer container. And can you also describe the differences in airflow between frozen cargo or, or very low respiring or non-respiring cargo and the kinds of produce that we normally handle, which have a reasonably moderate to high respiration rate? Yeah, and that was one of the things of, that I intuitively knew but never really thought about is that when you have frozen product, what you're trying to do is keep that product frozen. And yet you the air temperature, unless you're going across you know, the northern part of the United States in the dead of winter when it's already a minus temperature. The, the struggle is, is that you need to keep, keep the product frozen. So you want to move the air around the product. It's very important then to move the air around the product. Whereas if you're carrying a load of lettuce or citrus or something like that that is respiring and you still have the hot air from the ambient condition coming through, it, the thing is, though, is to move the air through the product. And so there's slightly different approaches that you would take in terms of uh, loading the container. Being post-harvest physiologists, we're always interested where controlled atmosphere from a post-harvest and an engineering perspective overlap. What were some of the key learnings of controlled atmosphere in this course for you? Well, I think it just emphasized the fact that controlled atmosphere, we, when we think of controlled atmosphere, let's say of apples in a long-term storage facility on land, these things are highly sophisticated. They've moved to active control of the atmosphere. Containers are quite a ways back in terms of development. And so the technology use goes all the way from passive, where you just basically seal the, the product into the container, versus newer technology now that's being introduced that is more active control, like you would see in a, in a uh, on-land um, storage facility, and that everything is in between. But I think the bottom line I got from it was this is a rapidly changing technology and that things will probably be quite, like they're, they're very different from what they were five years ago, they're gonna be very different five years from now and become more and more uh, controlled versus passive uh, CA, transport. And another aspect that we're considering in the future is the impact of containers on the carbon footprint. That's right, it was very, very interesting that uh, it was mentioned that one reefer container has an output of four tons of carbon dioxide per year. And when you think that there's a, over a million reefers on the water in use at any, at, at, in the world, and that the uh, growth of the use of reefers is about 5% per year, that's of a massive amount of carbon dioxide that's being released into the atmosphere. And one thing that they talked about quite a bit in the last lecture of the short course was the fact that the university is actively pursuing how to make these these reefer containers much more carbon friendly and have a lower footprint. And finally, when you did look at the container, what was the, the most interesting or little known fact for you when you were looking at the container itself? Well, I, I've been inside containers and looked at the T-bars. What was most interesting to me was looking at the drain holes because most people forget about the drainage, and yet you hear these horror stories of opening the back of a container and it pours out like a Niagara Falls or something. And it, what was emphasized is that when you're doing that inspection of the container before loading the container, besides making sure that the container is clean, that things are in good order, is that you need to make sure that the drain holes are open and and um, making sure that you have that drainage out of the drain holes because the refrigeration process generates water. And finally, uh, a recommendation up or down for this course. Thank you, Mary Lou. You're welcome, Deirdre.